everybody, welcome back to Culinary Undertaking. I'm TJ, and before we get started, just a reminder to make sure you subscribe and hit the little notification bell. And at the end, if you like my video and you like what I do, give it a big thumbs up, that way I know you like what I'm doing. And today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to make some stuffed acorn squash. And if you don't know what an acorn squash is, there they are. So there's one, and usually they're green when you buy them. Sometimes you'll see they'll have a little bit of orange on it, that's fine, they're still good. I've had them sit on my counter before until they turned mostly orange and they were still just as good. So to make this, we're going to have to cut them in half, so I've already got one done to show you. And then we're just going to use the hollowed out cavity inside. We're going to make a sausage stuffing to fill this up with and bake them off. Oh, and they're going to be really good. So to get started, first you want to prep your squash. And out of everything we're going to do today, this is going to be the hardest part. And only because these are pretty tough if you've never cut one of these, they're, they're pretty hard. But as long as you have a good sharp knife, you'll make it through. And I like to just sit mine down and let it kind of settle, make sure it's on a nice flat spot and not, not like that. That's a little bit wobbly there still. But just find a nice spot. I'll go right in between two of these. I call them ribs. I don't know what they're really called, but I go right in between there. And just go easy. Just put a little pressure, rock the knife back and forth a little bit. And we're looking to get this in half, as close to half as we can. Now, when you get down and you hit the, the little uh, stem, that's the hardest part. And if you can get a knife that's a little longer than your squash, you can put your hand on the point. Be really, really careful. If you're not comfortable doing it like that, you can always get a towel to kind of help you. Just put your towel on the front of the knife. And just kind of work it down slowly. That's not helping me. Just push through that stem. Just like that, it'll go. And again, if you've never done one of these on the inside, it's kind of like a pumpkin. So once you cut it open, there's gonna be a little membrane in there, and there's gonna be a whole bunch of seeds. But just take a spoon and it'll, it'll scrape right out. Nothing to it. So we're gonna hollow these out. And I've never tried to eat these seeds like pumpkin seeds. I don't, I would imagine if you like that type of thing, you could probably, rinse these off and clean them up and you could probably roast them and eat them. I've never tried it. I've done it with pumpkin seed, but never these. Now the big thing, I'll hollow this one out too, but the big thing is you want to make sure these lay flat because they're going to be stuffed. So you don't want one, this one's a little wobbly and to fix that, all you have to do is just see, I've got a high spot right there. So I'm just going to come through and just take a little bit of that rib off right there. Don't go too far there and now that lays nice and flat and it's stable it's not going anywhere so these are all good to go so i'll finish cleaning this one out and then i'll show you what we're going to make the stuffing out of it's pretty simple and you have some options there so let me finish this up i'll bring you back and we'll work on the stuffing part all right so our squash is all prepped and ready to go and i moved the camera to spare you from looking at my face any longer than you have to so now we'll just need a big mixing bowl now the main ingredient of course is going to be sausage and I'm going to use sage sausage sage sausage you've seen me use it before I like it so we're going to use that we're only going to need half of it and then to go with that we're going to need an egg I'm going to put in one clove of garlic I've got one cup of cooked rice so this is already cooked it's cooled down a little bit it's still a little bit warm but don't use raw make sure you cook it and I'm using brown rice you can use white you can use whatever you want but I just happen to have some brown, so that's what I've got. I've got a little bit of sour cream. I got a little oil to put over the top when we're done. And I've got, I'll probably use about half of this bell pepper. I meant to cut it up before, but I didn't, so you get to watch me chop up a pepper. So, in fact, I'm gonna start with the pepper first, because that way when I cut my sausage in half, my white, my knife won't be contaminated. But use as much or as little pepper as you want. And if there's other things you wanna put in this, you can. I'm going to go kind of easy on this because ew, I had a little baby inside. Um, I'm going to go a little bit light with my spices and things like that, the ingredients I'm putting in here, because the sage sausage is a little bit, you know, the sage isn't really strong in there. So I don't want to overpower that sage that's in here with a bunch of onions and, you know, hot peppers and other things like that. So that's why I'm keeping this fairly simple. But you use what you want. Use your favorite kind of sausage. If you want to use hot, use hot. 
If you want to use plain, use plain. If there's another kind like a maple flavored or something that you like, use what you want. This is what I like, so that's what I'm using. And so if you're gonna go with a like a plain sausage and you wanna spice it up a little bit or you wanna beef up those flavors a little bit, go ahead. Um, if you're gonna use a hot sausage and you wanna make it a little hotter or you wanna add some onions, you know, you wanna add some other things that won't matter, you're not overpowering it, you know, use whatever you like, but that's why I'm going kinda of I don't want to say bland, but I'm going a little bit easy on this. I don't want a whole bunch of strong flavors overpowering uh, the sage flavor in my sausage. So I'll just give this pepper here a quick little, quick little bite. And these pieces don't have to be perfect once they're mixed up in the sausage and cooked in the in the uh, in the acorn squash. No one's gonna notice. And as you can see, that's about half. If you want to use more, use more. Remember, this is your dish. Make how you want it. All right, now I'm just going to take this sausage, cut it about in half. Like that. And then to that, I'm going to add our egg. in there now I need to wash my hands got that raw egg on and don't forget you always want to add a little salt and pepper to whatever you're doing I didn't put it on the table here but give it a little shot of that there we go now the sour cream if you don't have sour cream you could use um, you could use plain yogurt you could use some heavy cream if you had it. If you had some cream cheese and it was out long enough and it was room temperature and nice and soft, you could use that. And I'm looking with this, I'm looking for oh, a few tablespoons of it. There's one, two, three. And if I need any more as we go, we'll add it in. And now this time, since I'm just using one clove of garlic, I'm gonna use my little garlic press here. And if you don't have one of these, they're pretty cool. If you're using just a little, if I'm doing a lot of garlic, like you've seen me use in previous videos, I just prefer to cut it with a knife. But with this, the cool thing is you don't have to take the skin off of the, off of the garlic. You just pop it in there, give it a little squeeze, and boom, just like that. Our garlic went through. You reach in there, you can pull your skin out, you're good to go. So they're pretty cool. So now I've got pepper, I've got sausage, I've got an egg, I've got my rice, a little salt and pepper, and a little bit of sour cream. And now we just want to mix this up, make sure we get that egg incorporated all through there. And this, you want this to be a little mushy. So with the, with the sour cream and the egg, this will help turn this into sort of a, thick paste type of consistency is what we're looking for. So just keep working it there. You can use your hand if you want to, but this comes together pretty easy. It's, it's not like making meatloaf or something where it's much better to use your hand. So I just use a spoon. Oh, one thing I will tell you is you can use, like I mentioned before, any sausage you want. I've tried making this before with, with ground beef. I figured, ah, sausage is sort of fatty and it works in here. So if I get some lean ground beef and put in here, that should work too. Ooh, it was gross. Don't use ground beef. It ended up when I pulled the peppers out of the, when they were done cooking and I took them out, the meat was cooked inside the pepper, but it was floating in a little lake of grease that had built up inside there. It was gross. All right, so there's our filling. There's our acorn squash. And now we just wanna fill each one of them up. 
And you just want to put the mixture in there. It doesn't need to overflow. You don't need to pack it in. Just smooth it out like that. And that is all there is to it. Now at this point, we'll just take a little bit of oil. And just give a little drizzle on the top. Maybe a little on the edge of the squash there like that. Now the last thing you want to do for this is take a piece of foil. And I'm just going to kind of pinch it long ways. Alright, you don't want to seal it. You just sort of want to make a little tent out of it like that. So the ends are completely open. I've got the sides crimped just to hold it on there. And then, now you can put this right into the oven, which you've already heated to 350. Uh, or, obviously I'm going to cook this in my smoker like I do most things. But whatever you want to do, smoker, oven, grill, whatever you want, whatever you have that heats up to 350. We're going to put this in there for one hour, covered. Then we'll check on it, we'll take the cover off, and then give it about another eh, 30 to 45 minutes. We'll just keep an eye on it and see when it's done. So I'll get this on, and in an hour, we'll check on it. Yeah, here we go. It's been an hour. Let's see what we got. To 45 minutes I'll let them go for probably a good 25 minutes before I check them again but when they're when we get to about that point we'll come back and we'll check them and we'll go from there all right it's been about 35 minutes and there we are getting nice and golden around the edge nice and soft there squash the meat's definitely cooked through so let me pull this off i'm going to let it cool down for a few minutes so i can taste it and we'll give it a try and see how it came out all right so after a couple of minutes of cooling this is what we've got Ooh, it smells very squashy but there it is you can tell it's nice and nice and soft the inside soft So I'm still getting the sage that's in the sausage. I'm getting the sweetness from the from the squash that goes with it. It goes together really good. A little bit of sweetness because I got a pepper that we cut up in that one. But this is really good. If you've never tried it, definitely give it a try. Now you can definitely hit the top of this. You can put some shredded cheese on there. You can hit it with a little hot sauce or something. That would be great too. So they're really versatile. You can kind of change this up, make it, you know, put your favorite things in it and on it, and then as far as a meal, you've already got your meat and your vegetable all in one. Add a little side salad, a little cottage cheese or something to go with it, and boom, there's dinner. So if you've never tried it, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.